Hi. How are you? Good. We are going to talk about branding. Now, this is beautiful brand, isn't it? I bought this yesterday in Ginza. Valentino bag, right? How much do you think uh, it costs? Have a guess. 800 yen? 800 dollars? How much do you think? Hmm? 1,000 US. Uh huh. Interesting. Wrong. Totally wrong. It looks like, uh, like Valentino, but it's spelled Viantino. <clears throat> I paid 1,050 yen at a very nice shop in Ginza. Okay, now this is what I'm going to talk about tonight. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Before I go into uh, branding, something terrible happened this morning, early this morning. Dow Jones average fell 512 points, and which is the steepest decline since 2008 crisis. Look at this. You know, it tumbled down, and uh, uh, it fell by 4.3% in a day. And of course, Nikkei average fell as well today. I waited until after 3 p.m. today to get this chart on this slide. So it was minus 359 yen, which is a minus 3.7%. Okay. Only three days ago, uh, August the 2nd, uh, United States avoided default as Obama signed the bill, uh, debt bill. And uh, this, uh, this is very strange, you know. If you think about it, US government total borrowing is $14 trillion, okay, which is uh, 1140 yen in Japanese, which is exactly the same amount of government debt of Japan. Did you know that? Same amount. But GDP in the United States is, again, very interesting, about $14 trillion. So the US debt is almost exactly uh, the same amount as their GDP, whereas the Japanese GDP is one third of that. So that means we have a much more serious problem in Japan than the United States. But these um, um, government bonds of the United States are owned by foreign countries such as China. China owns um, one point one six trillion dollars of government bonds of the United States, right? And Japan, the number two, own a lot of uh, government bonds. So if the US uh, had this default, then that would have been a global crisis. Okay, that was avoided, but it did not stop so the uh, investors worry about the uh, uh, future of the economy. That's why the uh, Dow Jones average fell this morning. And uh, of course, everybody is talking about the uh, uh, sharp decline of US dollars uh, versus uh, Japanese yen. And uh, so the uh, Bank of Japan decided to uh, step in uh, to intervene just two days ago. And uh, it uh, uh, improved a bit from 76 yen to 79 yen, but today it's back to 78 yen. So it's not working. Anyway, this is the uh, uh, most recent uh, picture of the world economy, what's happening. Let's uh, uh, look at the world economy as a whole. The uh, economic growth is stagnant all over the world. Okay, and unemployment continues to be very high. 
like uh, average is uh, about 10% in uh, Europe and in the United States. In Japan, the uh, number is about 5%, but this is uh, uh, not reflecting the uh, true uh, picture of the employment. Because in Japan, Japanese companies tend to keep people, right? Even if they are not, not uh, needed, right? So I think the actual percentage of uh, the Japanese unemployment would be about 10%. I think. Now, there, uh, there are lots of monies all over the world, excessive liquidity among advanced nations. So what do they do? OK, they do not know where to invest their money. So uh, would they uh, put them uh, uh, in the bank? But uh, bank deposits do not give you good interest return. So they want to uh, invest. So they uh, uh, buy uh, stocks in the uh, uh, developing countries. So these uh, 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 stocks in China, Australia, Brazil, Korea, India, and so on and so forth are rising, right? But probably rising much higher than their actual economies, you know. And gold is uh, soaring. And it was only like $1,000 several years ago. It's now almost $1,700. So if you had invested in gold five years ago, you'd be very rich. You'd be laughing all the way to the, to the bank. Crude oil is uh, also rising you know, because uh, more uh, developing countries are driving uh, more cars in China or in Brazil or India, everybody is owning more cars and uh, they want to heat their homes. And so the consumption of uh, uh, oil is increasing. So this demand will push up the price of crude oil. China is uh, uh, continuing their uh, high growth every year, about 10% per year, okay? And uh, some of the uh, uh, high-rise buildings, uh, apartments uh, 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 are rising in price, just like a bubble economy, which we had in Japan about 20 years ago. India. I was in India a few years ago, and uh, people are working so hard. They are studying so hard, and they try to uh, improve their standard of living, right? And uh, with their massive uh, population, I think India will be a very, very strong country in several years' time. And they are very, very intelligent, too. And they speak English, sort of English, you know. <laughs> you know? And uh, I was there for about, uh, about one week. And uh, while I was... Uh, discussing business uh, I, uh, while I was ma uh, making lectures, I uh, had to speak with uh, my Indian uh, partners. And they said, oh, Mr. Uyama, shall we have curry rice tonight? You know? Then I started to talk like that. <laughs> so by the time I had to uh, stand up and uh, give a lecture in English, then I said, good morning. It is very, very nice to see you. Then everybody said, oh, doesn't he speak beautiful English? <laughs> you know. But uh, India is growing. US is obviously in deep trouble. And uh, it was uh, recovering uh, from the uh, mid-2009 uh, and uh, then towards uh, 2010. Uh, but uh, the companies got so much more careful uh, and they did not hire more people. So there are uh, still lots of people without job in the United States. And now, you know, today this stock crash and then the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, government debt problems and everything, it's uh, actually deteriorating uh, much faster than, uh, than you think. And so this U.S. economy could be... Uh, trigger to another sort of a, 
uh, collapse of the world economy. Uh, Europe, I was in uh, England and uh, France last uh, month, and uh, the uh, standard of living and lifestyle in, the, uh, in London and in Paris are beautiful. More cars, more new cars are driving, and uh, more nice restaurants, people are eating uh, well, and uh, uh, people are enjoying good lifestyle. But uh, it's only happening uh, in a sort of, a, well, only a limited number of uh, countries. You know, like UK, maybe a part of Germany, and uh, France. But the problem is uh, Greece, Portugal, Spain, and Italy. And uh, somehow the southern part of Europe uh, have had a pretty uh, difficult uh, time in, uh, uh, in economy all the time, actually. And uh, I used to live in England for almost nine years. And then I used to live in Germany for about a year. And uh, people work very hard. And they have sort of very, very serious work ethics. And uh, whereas people in Latin countries, they sort of... Uh, you know, hasta mañana, you know, attitude. You know, they really enjoy their lives. They enjoy sunshine, wine, romance, and uh, singing. It's nice. But uh, first, you have to earn, you know, money to support your enjoyment. But uh, this is the uh, uh, general picture of Europe right now. Japan. Okay. Dull recovery. It has been recovering gradually. But then this uh, earthquake and tsunami hit on uh, March the 11th. And after that, the economy has been, of course, uh, pretty weak. And uh, but on the other hand, it's really amazing that some of the companies have been recovering so uh, fast, like Honda Motors, Toyota, and uh, uh, Sony. And uh, it's amazing how hard they have worked. But uh, still, we have a lot of problems. So this was the uh, general picture of world economy, so that we have the same understanding where we stand. Now let's talk about branding. There is a word called parity. Okay, parity comes from Latin par, P-A-R. Par means the same. Like uh, in golf, this is a par four. Okay, you score four. It's the same as a par. So the standard score, so it's a par. It means equal. Parity is a very nice word in marketing. It means a situation where you cannot uh, differentiate products, right? Like uh, uh, differentiation on, on, uh, of products uh, based on their performance, specs, or durability, or design, or price becomes so difficult. Okay, so this is a parity situation. Uh, we can see the parity situation in almost any industries, okay? First, the cars. Here I've got a Mercedes-Benz and uh, Lexus and the BMW. They are all beautiful. They are all uh, very strong. They last uh, many years. And uh, it is very difficult to uh, differentiate these cars. Like I drive a SEMA. Nissan SEMA, sometimes uh, in a uh, parking lot, uh, I make a mistake because uh, Mercedes and the SEMA and the Lexus look pretty same, you know, very similar. Now, if you went to a big camera or a Yodobashi camera, you see lots of uh, flat TVs. From the distance, you can never tell whether that's made by Panasonic or Sharp, or Sony, or Toshiba. They look all the same, right? Prices are very similar. Because if one manufacturer drops their price, then you have to follow suit. Otherwise, you cannot sell your TVs, right? And the durability is fantastic, OK? Because they share uh, the, uh, uh, some of the components from the same uh, component man manufacturers, right? And the semiconductor is the same. So the performance has to be very similar. Same thing can be said with uh, uh, personal computers, digital cameras. Now, digital uh, cameras, uh, it was quite sensational uh, when Casio 
produced a uh, uh, camera with uh, more than uh, 10 uh, megapixels. Oh, that's fantastic. That's great. You know, all the others had only five or six uh, megapixels. But today, most of the, uh, these manufacturers produce with more than 10 megapixels. And uh, the price is probably like uh, 30,000 yen or 20,000 yen, very cheap. I bought a, uh, a Sony camera, new one, just before I left for, uh, for London uh, last, uh, last month, for only 16,000 yen. It takes beautiful pictures, wonderful. And it, it has a special feature to uh, uh, automatically to take pictures when people are smiling. Did you know that? When you smile, then it takes pictures, beautiful pictures, right? Costs only 16,000 yen. Houses, I enjoy going to uh, uh, housing centers, you know, to uh, take a look at the inside, outside, everything. And uh, these houses look beautiful, nice, comfortable. But uh, see, because of the uh, competition, they have to lower the prices to about the same level, right? And design, very similar, right? So it is very difficult to, to distinguish the difference, say, from the Daiwa house, sexy house, or Pana home, or, or Toyota home, right? Golf driver, I love golf. Who plays golf here? Yeah, what's your handicap? 98? That's not the, the handicap. Handicap is like, a, your handicap will be like a 16. Good. 18. That's good. Okay, keep working on it. Okay, you'll be a good golfer. Now, these are the uh, latest drivers, right? Uh, TaylorMade and uh, uh, Legacy and Zexio. They're all wonderful dri drivers. I use all of them. Yeah, they go like 240 yards. <laughs> wonderful. And uh, it's so difficult to... Uh, uh, to stick to one of them. Toothpaste. They are sold for about 150 yen, right? And uh, uh, they uh, clean your teeth, and uh, they are refreshing. And uh, uh, so it's, uh, again, very uh, difficult to differentiate. Detergent. I do washing almost every day at my apartment. And I use all of these, attack, aerial, bold. They do the job, OK, all of them. Tea, for 150 yen, you can buy all of these, right? Oyo chap, or yemon, or namacha. They all taste wonderful. OK, now you have seen the parity situation in almost all the uh, uh, categories. Now, let's talk about branding, the word branding. When I was in college, there was no word called branding, OK? And uh, we were just about to starting to use the word marketing instead of sales, OK? And branding, I think, came out uh, probably like uh, 20 years ago, maybe. But before that, I have never heard the word called branding. Of course, there was a noun called brand, like Coca-Cola is a famous brand. Then somebody started to use it as a verb. Like, I branded the Sony Walkman. I did. I branded the Sony Walkman. It's a kind of fancy word, you know. I did the marketing uh, uh, job, advertising and everything to uh, popularize the Sony Walkman. So, Branding uh, includes all of those marketing activities. And then if you made this verb, if you put ing after brand, it becomes a gerund, branding. Here we go. Branding strategy is a key to success for any companies. Now everybody talks about branding. It's a fancy word, just as marketing was a fancy word 30 years ago. Right? 
So this is the origin of the word branding. OK, what's branding? Let's think about it. Okay. Everybody uses the word branding because it's kind of fancy to use it. Oh, I love branding. You know? Oh my god, he, he sounds very intelligent. <laughs> and I'm engaged in branding uh, the, uh, uh, my company's uh, new products. Oh yeah? But exactly what does he do? OK, a good brand is a promise. It's a nice word. You have to remember this thing. A good brand is a promise, but a greater, great brand is a promise kept. You understand? Now, FedEx, they advertise themselves and, uh, by saying, when it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. It's quite a promise, isn't it? So they're advertising. They're saying, OK, give us your merchandise. We'll deliver that by tomorrow morning, whatever happens, right? OK, so you trust their promise, OK? A good brand is a promise, this part. Next part, a great brand is a promise kept. OK, whether FedEx actually has delivered your thing by next morning, that's more important, right? So a, uh, this is a very, very good phrase to remember. A good brand is a promise. A great brand is a promise kept, OK? Now, branding, key to differentiation. There are four cars here. Nissan Sima, it's my car, and uh, uh, Toyota Lexus on your left-hand side. And on your right-hand side, I've got Mercedes-Benz and BMW. OK. They all have like a, about four liter engine in it. OK. And these two Japanese cars are sold around uh, six million yen, seven million yen, something like that. And the uh, Mercedes-Benz and the BMW with the uh, similar engine are sold at almost a double price, like a 12 million yen, 13 million yen. Why? Where does this uh, difference in price come from? Uh, it's all from branding. It's, it does not come from the actual hardware of the, uh, of the product. How, if you compare the performance of hardware, apple to apple, they are almost the same. Or maybe the Japanese cars may be more reliable. But people are prepared to spend more money on Mercedes-Benz and BMW. This is the magic of branding. Look at the uh, latest ad by Mercedes-Benz. A cockpit, an engine, two wings. Is it still a car? Isn't it nice? Pretty uh, bold statement. And it has a futuristic image. Okay? So the combination of uh, Mercedes-Benz reliability with this futuristic image generates a wonderful ambience around the brand. So here is uh, BMW. Now, the, uh, it says street legal. Pretty much. Now, street legal. OK, this high performance car, is it still allowed to be driven on the street? See, again, this is a very, very bold statement, isn't it? And now, Toyota Lexus is trying to imitate the uh, total whole tone of the ad. Black background, you know, sort of a high quality image. But uh, the statement is, I. I actually do not like so much. <laughs> uh, perfect for today's uh, economic climate and tomorrow's. It, it's OK. It's OK, but uh, not exciting, not sexy. You understand? Yeah. Because uh, if you spend like a 7 million yen or so much money, you do not really worry about the gas consumption so much. You know. And uh, so to appeal 
to this kind of a target audience with this kind of statement may not work. Why Mercedes-Benz? Politicians like Mercedes, right? When the uh, president uh, of any countries go to uh, uh, some other countries, I think they demand to be driven uh, on Mercedes-Benz, motorcade with Mercedes. You see, you cannot do that with uh, a Toyota Corolla, right? <laughs> no way. And uh, uh, Lexus is trying to get into this league, but uh, not yet. It's a very, very difficult uh, uh, league to enter. Now, all these Yakuza's, they love Mercedes-Benz, especially the white one. White Mercedes with Naniwa number. Be careful, okay? <laughs> Don't go near them, okay? And Yakuza or, uh, uh, I apologize if there was any members of uh, Yakuza in this audience. <laughs> But uh, Yakuza's or real estate agents, they love Mercedes too. When they uh, uh, show their customers nicest apartments or something, oh, please, uh, I will come to, uh, to get you in, uh, in my Mercedes. Boom. See? Then the uh, whole atmosphere becomes sort of special, gorgeous, you know. And, uh, Anyway, so Mercedes-Benz has that kind of aura. Now, let's focus on uh, airline business. Virgin Atlantic, here's Richard Branson. Richard and myself have been good friends for 23 years. I uh, interviewed him for the first time in uh, 1988 for TV Tokyo's uh, uh, interview program called uh, Hello VIP. Ever since, we have been great friends. Three days ago, I sent him an email Dear Richard, it's a big news in Japan that you have been swallowed by a uh, shark. Are you okay? Then he sent me an a, a email back. Dear Shu, uh, the shark spat me out. So I'm completely safe. Thank you. Then I wrote him back. Richard, I understand you'll be uh, diving down deep uh, in the, uh, into the uh, uh, Japan and the Mariana Trench uh, in a year or two. Uh, we'll make sure to uh, let all the sharks know uh, to leave you alone. And uh, he sent me back. I love it. Anyway, Richard is like that. Very, very with it, trendy guy. He is 61 years old, but still a boy in his mind, you know, very adventurous, mischievous boy, just like me. Japan Airlines, look at this. Japan Airlines uh, is in uh, deep trouble. So they asked Mr. Ina, uh, Inamori of the Kyoto Ceramic Company to become uh, the chairman, right? So uh, they, uh, they advertise very quietly and uh, something, wait a minute, here we go. Richard, when I interviewed him, he said, Shu, when I started the airlines, I decided to make my airlines an entertainment business, not a transportation business. Before Virgin Atlantic Airways uh, was formed, the uh, common notion of airline business is a uh, transporting people or things from point A to point B safely, right? Not exciting at all, right? But if you are flying from Tokyo, from Narita to uh, London Heathrow Airport, it takes 13 hours, right? So this 13 hours, you are confined in this limited uh, space, right? You can't do anything about it. So Richard has decided, OK, let me entertain you, right? So he serves beautiful foods, beautiful wine, champagne, and uh, uh, massage, and uh, uh, manicure, and uh, then uh, uh, bar counter where 
Uh, people can come and uh, you can make friends, you can drink as much as you, you like, and then uh, uh, audiovisual entertainment is really uh, limitless. Uh, you can choose uh, your favorite movies out of, say, 100 selections anytime you like. And you can go to bed, flat, full flat bed, right, anytime. It's fantastic. And you really do not want to leave, right? So by the time you arrive uh, at London Heathrow Airport after 13 hours, you're all fresh, very fresh, refreshed, satisfied, slightly drunk, but uh, very happy. And uh, his uh, promotion or event thing is very, very funny. He, he has a strange habit of carrying beautiful ladies in his arms you know, all the time, sometimes upside down, something like that. And then he runs uh, this beautiful commercial, right? It really gives a wonderful image. And uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you go back uh, home tonight, please uh, look at the uh, YouTube uh, TV commercial and you really want to uh, 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 fly with Virgin. Now, compared with that, very quiet Japan Airlines, quiet and conservative approach. Kokoro ni nokoru sora no tabie, you know, memorable trip, well, something like that. Uh, which would you like to <laughs> choose, right? This is branding, okay? Now, let's uh, look at the famous brands, world famous brands, your favorite ones, okay? Louis Vuitton, right? Very nice, very posh, and uh, trying to appeal to both uh, men and women, right? And uh, they have a very nice style, very good taste, right? So it makes me laugh. So sort of, it's kind of funny uh, when I see some young girls uh, in Dogenzaka in, uh, in Shibuya carrying a Louis Vuitton bag. You know, saying, hey, I am carrying Louis Vuitton. Look at me, you know. Actually, uh, she may be uh, living in a very, very small apartment, you know, without uh, uh, central heating or without a bathtub or something like that. But uh, it's a sort of imbalance, right? But uh, this is what Louis Vuitton is trying to create. This is the world. Next, Gucci, right? Gucci, again, is a very, very uh, sophisticated European taste. Hermes. Some of my American friends pronounce this Hermes. <laughs> Hermes, right? You should pronounce it Hermes, OK? Hermes. And uh, once I had to buy a Hermes Birkin bag. Not for me, but uh, one of my friends asked me to buy it for him because he wanted to give it to his wife uh, as a birthday present. He's a billionaire living in Greece, running a shipping company, right? And uh, he said, I tried to find a Birkin bag uh, at London uh, Hermes shop and in New York. They did not have any stock. Could you please find if you can uh, get one for my wife? So I went to Ginza, Elmer's shop, and uh, naturally they did not have any in stock. This is black Birkin. That's funny, isn't it? They may be creating artificial shortage of stock, you know, in order to create more demand or in order to push up the price. Actually, talking about price, the uh, list price is a 650,000 yen. Okay, it's about $8,000, right? I managed to find one on the uh, internet. It costs one million, over one million yen. Very expensive, but I got one for him and I sent it, and uh, his wife was very, very happy. Okay. So this kind of artificial shortage of inventory is a very, very shrewd way okay, to uh, keep the price very, very high. 
next Tiffany. Tiffany uses all the time this beautiful color of blue for packaging and for advertising. And so if uh, somebody bought you a uh, present from Tiffany's, you know, it's wrapped in a very nice blue paper. And uh, you can see, ah, he bought a Tiffany for me, right? Nice. Bulgari. Bulgari is a very, very mature type of uh, approach, see, uh, to justify the very, very expensive uh, price and the expensive uh, taste. So all these world famous brands are trying so hard to create wonderful ambience around their brands and that uh, they are succeeding. That's why they can afford to build new showrooms in Ginza and in uh, uh, Omote Sando and all those places. Now, I branded Sony Walkman myself. It was back in 1979, okay? I was the uh, deputy advertising uh, manager at Sony, uh, working directly under Mr. Morita. Mr. Morita, Akio Morita, founded this Sony, and uh, he was uh, then the president. But he loved this concept so much, so he tried to organize a uh, project team called the Walkman team, and luckily I was one of them. And uh, we had a weekly meeting, and uh, there was a prototype of uh, Walkman uh, with a big headphones, too heavy, okay? So Mr. Morita said, oh, Mr. Morita has a Nagoya accent in, uh, in Japanese and in English, too. He says, In English, same. My name is Morita. I'm very, very happy to see you, okay? And uh, anyway, he was my direct boss. And he said, Shoop, while we are making prototypes, you have to think about how to advertise this uh, new gadget. You know, it was not a high-tech product. It was a low-tech product. It was a, just a combination of a, a tape recorder with a pair of headphones. You know, anybody could have made it, like a Panasonic or Toshiba or anybody, but nobody did. Huh? Only Sony uh, focused on this, and uh, we came up with this Walkman. And uh, we did uh, this funny campaign with a Japanese old man in uh, Yukata uh, dancing with this uh, very tall American uh, model, dancing together from the same Walkman, two pairs of uh, headphones, you know, enjoying together. So this we wanted to create that anybody can enjoy this, old, or young, or Japanese, or foreigners, you know, everybody joined the group of Walkman, right? And uh, we also gave free samples to uh, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, and uh, Lionel Richie, all those guys, and they loved it. And uh, they tried to uh, uh, listen to the Walkman even on the stage. And uh, people looked at it, hey, Michael is uh, listening to uh, some, some kind of new, new kind of uh, gadget. What's that? Hey, that's a Sony Walkman. Man, that's fantastic. Let's get it. So the, uh, I call it a aspirational uh, strategy. Okay? I want to be like that. If Michael is using it, I want to be like that. Right? So it's very, very important to create this kind of uh, atmosphere. Right? Because the gadget was not, nothing, sort of not special at all, right? But we created this wonderful image, just like Apple is doing right now with iPhone 4, with iPad 2. If you own uh, iPad 2, hey, he's got iPad 2. Fantastic. Then new uh, MacBook Air, wonderful, beautiful design. Right? I love it. And uh, uh, this kind of special ambience, okay, Apple has inherited from, sort of, sort of stole it from, from Sony. Okay? And under the, 
normal circumstances. Well, if I had been with Sony, stayed with Sony, Sony would have been uh, doing the same thing as Apple. Anyway. Uh, OK, this is an a intermission. Comical haiku on branding. Dobuita matai de Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton stepping on the gutters. Chaco ga naktemo Mercedes. Mercedes even without a garage. Jukkai barai de Armani. Armani on 10 installments. Otto Uniqlo tsuma Armani. Husband Uniqlo, wife Armani. <laughs> Uh, this shows how uh, brands uh, are strong, how brands can uh, influence your buying attitude, and uh, how people can become so vain, you know, oh, I, I can uh, save my other expenses in order to get a Louis Vuitton bag, you know, something like that. But anyway, here we go. Going back to branding. I think there are three kinds of branding. First one is corporate branding. Like Sony, Apple, Toyota, Panasonic, Mercedes-Benz. These are the corporate names. When you see these logo type, you feel something. What do you feel? Apple logo looks good right now because everything is going well with them, right? Sony logo type looks a bit sad because they are losing money on uh, color TV business and their stock is down today very sharply. Toyota, Toyota's logo looks struggling to recover what they have lost. Panasonic, pretty good. They are doing very well. Mercedes, very solid. Okay, you feel different feelings from all these different logo types, right? That is what I call the corporate branding, okay? Then you go to uh, product branding. Product branding is like a Walkman or Celsio, Viera, or MacBook Air. These are the names of products. But again, you feel something. From this logo type of Walkman, what do you feel? Okay, Small, light, with it, trendy, maybe. Celsio, what do you feel? Very reliable. Gas consumption is good, that kind of thing. Viera, ah, Viera, Ishika Ryo-chan, or uh, new TV commercials, nice image. Makia book, Makbukia, beautiful. So these feelings you feel are very, very important. And they can be the trigger when you make a purchase decision next time. Right now, the third branding is the personal branding. Okay, you look at the uh, Richard Branson of uh, Virgin Atlantic Airways or Masayoshi Son of uh, SoftBank or Steve Jobs of uh, Apple. These people you can actually. Uh, say, oh, Richard Branson is virgin, right? Oh, Son Masayoshi is SoftBank. Steve Jobs is Apple, okay? There were probably more corporate leaders like that whom you can relate directly to their companies, like uh, Morita of Sony, or Mr. Matsushita of Panasonic, or Mr. Honda of Honda. But nowadays, there are not so many people like that. Now, who knows the uh, president of uh, Mitsubishi Tokyo UFJ Bank, right? 
Do you know who is the president of uh, Nippon Steel? Right? They're big companies, very, very famous companies, right? So this kind of a personal branding is so important, OK? And uh, if uh, uh, you succeed in uh, enhancing the image of both yourself and your company, then you've got a winner. Now, let's look at the, some of the uh, elements of branding. First, management philosophy. OK, this is a book which uh, Richard wrote. The original uh, title is called uh, Losing Virginity. It's a very funny, uh, uh, tricky uh, title. I spent seven months translating this book into Japanese, and it's still selling. And uh, uh, in this, uh, he has written about his life story as well as uh, management philosophy. And uh, this is very, very important and a strong vehicle for branding. Um, Steve Jobs was the cover of Newsweek. This is, again, a very strong message to uh, all over the world. iPod, therefore I am. This is it Pascal? Was that? No. Uh, Descartes. Descartes said, je pense donc je suis. Right? I think, therefore I am. This is fantastic. So this uh, front cover actually lifted up his status so, so high and did a lot of good for the uh, brand image of Apple. Second, design is very important. iPad, too. Look at this. I use iPad, but uh, my friend bought an iPad, too. Slightly smaller, slimmer. Nice. Has a camera too. Yeah. I'm thinking of changing it to an iPad too. Of course, uh, Ferrari looks beautiful. Okay. So design is so beautiful. Other elements of branding performance and specs, like a fuel consumption. In the case of uh, Toyota Prius, it's very important for branding. You understand? Now, resolution. Uh, how clear your TV picture is. It's, again, very important for TV. Power consumption, when you sell a uh, refrigerator, it's important. Then air condition bills, very important. When uh, uh, you try to sell solar uh, cells for your houses. Other elements, speed, important for sports car. Durability, when... Uh, uh, you are trying to sell BMX bikes and uh, lightweight sneakers and small size MP3 players. And other elements, sales amount, profit, market share, stock price, they are all very important for your branding, corporate branding. And uh, communication tools, now we are slowly uh, entering the communication media area, OK? Stock price itself can be a media, OK, to uh, uh, transmit the uh, corporate performance. Company building also can show what kind of company yours is. Name cars or showrooms or vehicles and company uniforms. They are all telling something about your company, right? Now, let's come into the media. There are four traditional media, TV, newspaper, magazine, radio. These are called the uh, four big media. Now, however, the uh, these four major media have been decreasing their market share. On the other hand, uh, internet ad is increasing, or uh, satellite media uh, is growing. Why? 
downfall of terrestrial TV channels because too many silly variety programs ignoring the intelligence of viewers. Do you watch all these variety shows yourself? Raise your hand. Right? But there are so many of them. Around this time of the night, 8 p.m., if you change the channel from, say, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 9, 80% of variety programs, city. And uh, news programs. I think the emission of news program is they have to be correct, they have to be speedy, and they have to be neutral, right? BBC is like that. American, uh, uh, say, CBS or ABC are like that too. On the other hand, some of the Japanese news programs, they misunderstand. They think it's a sort of variety show. And the too many personal opinions of newscasters and the commentators. I do not want to hear their city comments. I want their raw material. And judgment is mine to make, right? There was a book called, uh, Has TV Made the Japanese People Stupid? Yes, indeed. I think so. And uh, uh, people uh, feel somehow insecure if TV is not on. And uh, one cannot think for, for oneself anymore. And they just uh, you know, receive all these uh, city messages and they laugh with the, uh, uh, the TV programs. And uh, people become passive to everything. Right? That's why if you ask Japanese, typical Japanese, what do you think about this? Then they say, ah, I don't know. Uh, mm, uh, it is very difficult. Uh, yes, you can say uh, yes, but on the other hand, you can say no too. Uh, you know, it's very typical, right? Where does that come from? It comes from the city Japanese educational system and also TVs. That's what I think. Now, viewing rate determines the price of uh, uh, TV commercials insertion. Okay, if the rating is high. Uh, TV stations demand more money from the sponsors. So it's a, it's a very, very important uh, um, figure uh, when uh, you try to do business. But actually, what does this really mean? You know, if nobody's watching, like uh, only the cats are watching, you know? <laughs> Look at this. And then uh, these uh, uh, sponsors, Coca-Cola or the Mazda or House Vermont, curry and uh, potato chips and uh, uh, Galaxy S and so on and so on. They are make, uh, running all these commercials when only cats are watching, right? Maybe viewing rate is high, like 15%, but they are wasting a lot of money, right? And uh, viewer quality is more important, right? What kind of people are watching the program? Not the uh, number including your cats, right? Then why internet ad is growing? Because internet, you try to make an access from yourself, very active. So you are very, very hungry for knowledge, hungry for information, right? Rather than passive viewing attitudes of TV, see? And no limit in time and place. Okay, you can make an access anytime, any way you like. And uh, there are so many uh, uh, useful uh, sites, you know, like Google, Yahoo, and uh, uh, also uh, these uh, uh, mobile phones, especially in Japan, has become a very important media, which has not happened in the uh, other countries, like the US. See. Lots of people are in the train. It makes me mad sometimes. You get on the train, everybody's looking like this, right? Either trying to uh, uh, play some games or trying to uh, find some nice accessories to buy or whatever. 
or uh, sending or receiving email, that kind of thing. I think it should be banned legally, you know? They are doing too much of this. But anyway, that's Japan. Growth of uh, internet ads. Uh, expansion of uh, SNS, social networking service, blogs, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. Uh, it's uh, making um, uh, our lives more interesting and uh, trying to communicate with more people all over the world. It's fun. I'm doing this every day. I'm writing my blog every day in two languages, Japanese and English, and they're putting lots of uh, uh, interesting pictures. And uh, lots of people come to visit uh, my blog too. And so uh, it's more active. You are participating you know, in this kind of society. Now, growth of satellite media. This is very interesting. Why the terrestrial TV stations are losing their shares? But these guys are increasing their shares. Why? Because, like me, if I love golf, I want to watch Golf Network. Then, if you love history, you go to the History Channel. If you want to get the latest news in English, you go to CNN. Or oh, Sky Perfect, you uh, 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 watch many, many uh, channels. And Nikkei CNBC, if you are an investor, then Discovery Channel, if you like nature, right? So it's so clear cut, right? And uh, they provide very deep content, okay, to satisfy your needs, okay, rather than shallow variety program content. See, because people are demanding more detailed, much deeper content. Now, let's talk about demography. Okay, demography is what? Age, sex, and uh, um, income, right? Like a 30-year-old female income, say, 3 million yen, something like that. Okay, that used to be the uh, classification of uh, your target audience. Okay, our product, like this uh, Volvic, is a um, nice drink, very healthy, European uh, ambience. Okay, we'll target for towards the 30-year-old uh, female uh, with the uh, income of about, say, 3 million or 4 million yen, something like that. But it's no longer valid. Look at this. See, lifestyle is more important. Okay? Different people have different lifestyle, right? And different values. And uh, different way of spending their money. For example, 30-year-old female, 3 million yen income. Okay, this lady lives in Tokyo, single, working at an office in, uh, in Marunouchi. She loves fitness, cooking, live concerts, and overseas uh, trips. On the other hand, that lady over there lives in Okayama, divorced with a, a kid. Uh, her mother is uh, living to together, and uh, she's working at nightclub. She wants to save money, but she can't, okay? Both of them, 30 years old, female, 3 million yen income, right? They are vastly different, right? So if you're selling this, you'll be selling this to this lady, not to this lady. She will never buy a bottled water. She cannot afford to. She has to look after her kid and mom. And she, she's working at nightclub, right? So please remember, when you do your branding, from demography to lifestyle. Lifestyle is more important because it determines how to spend your money. And this fragmentation of lifestyle has led to fragmentation of media. You understand? Because different tastes and different uh, values uh, lead them to different media. CNN, YouTube, 
CNBC, Animal Planet, and so on and so forth. Okay. Wow, only five minutes to go. Shoot. Ah, okay, I'll hurry up. Successful branding, Apple. Why succeed it? Products with the ultra modern design and the best specs. And uh, it must be an Apple to be groovy. Okay, that's image. And Steve Jobs has a charisma. Next, Daiwa House. Wonderful uh, series of commercials. Humor. And Daiwa House remains in your ears. And broke the parity boredom. Okay? They did not talk about uh, the, uh, how great their houses are. They were just uh, uh, having fun. I remember uh, watching their first commercial. A uh, English teacher teaching English. And the girls are repeating uh, after him. My father is a doctor. My father is a doctor. My mother is a teacher. My mother is a teacher. My house is a dial house. My house is a dial house. Why? You know? That was fun. That was great. Right? Next, SoftBank. This dog and this uh, strange family. Management understand to let the creators have fun. Okay, you can feel that. And the uh, personal branding of CEO Masao Son uh, is uh, good. And success of introducing iPhones and iPad 2 onto the Japanese market. But they all sort of uh, came together and created good image. Have you ever seen this commercial, Evian? Wonderful. All these babies doing uh, roller skating. You should, you should see it uh, on the YouTube. Okay? Now, theme which has nothing to do with the water. Okay? Surprise! Video and uh, uh, music to create trendiness. It's a very nice music. And uh, which company ran that interesting TV commercial? You know, you want to find out from your side rather than being pushed, you know, Evian. But then you find uh, Evian. Oh, of course. So the uh, important thing is the harmony between hardware and software. Okay, hardware, by that I mean good product, competitive, good price. Software is, uh, uh, how do I say, uh, ambience, image, and a uh, uh, very flexible way of thinking. And it is very important to have good combination of hardware and software in marketing. Now. I have classified Japanese population into three categories. I type person, vertical access only, work, work, work. Okay, majority in Japan, work only. And uh, they go to probably yakitori bar uh, on their way back home and complain about their uh, bosses. And they may be uh, living in a 2LDK, okay? How boring, okay. Now, you have to have a horizontal axis to make it T. T type person, okay? You have to work though, okay, to earn your living. But you want to do a motorcycling, a concert, or a golf, gardening, and uh, cooking, okay? Stretch your horizon, okay? Increase your hobbies. Do anything you like, okay? And now, if a, that T, T type person gets married, he gets another vertical axis, which is family, which completes the whole thing, lifestyle, into an H-type, H-type person, okay? Work, hobbies, and family. You have to aim to become an H-type person because H-type person can generate lots of good ideas, lots of creative ideas because they are enjoying many different things in life, okay? Not only work, not only family, but lots of hobbies and lots of human network, okay? That makes them a more interesting person, more creative person. So I want you to be, to join this H-type person and uh, come up with creative ideas. And the creative ideas will rejuvenate the Japanese economy. And good ideas lead to successful branding, which is a key to rejuvenating the Japanese economy.
Don't give up Japan. Don't give up Tohoku. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.